my name is uh, Stephen Black. I'm a consultant vascular surgeon at Guys and St. Thomas's Hospital in London and a reader in venous surgery at King's College London. The uh, study that I've been running is the Abre uh, IDE study uh, run by Medtronic. The Abre study was designed to uh, really evaluate the safety and effectiveness of the Abre stent system for the treatment of patients with a broad spectrum of venous outflow obstruction. Uh, the primary objective was 30-day safety and uh, um, uh, 12-month primary patency of the stent, uh, which was defined as freedom from clinically driven target lesion revascularization. Abre was a single-arm cold study uh, recruiting from sites both in the US and uh, Europe. Uh, with the intention to recruit 200 patients undergoing venous interventions for uh, a variety of indications. The primary endpoints, as I mentioned uh, earlier, were primary safety outcomes of 30 days, which was a freedom from major adverse events, and uh, primary patency of the Abre stent system, which was defined as freedom from target lesion revascularization or uh, instant stenosis of greater than 50% at the one year time point. Uh, we had a number of secondary objectives, which were really to assess uh, clinical effectiveness of, of venous interventions. And these were built around a primary assisted and secondary patency, as well as a range of clinical and quality of life outcome measures. Um, based on uh, standard quality of life scores and clinical scoring systems. Uh, the Abre study met uh, the primary safety endpoint and the primary patency endpoints uh, with a significant improvement over the performance goal based on uh, previous per literature review. And all the secondary endpoints showed significant improvement in both quality of life and clinical outcomes for the patients. And these results were sustained out to one year in, uh, in all patients. And in addition, when we looked at the uh, major adverse events, it was a very low rate of major adverse events, uh, with the majority of these being related to episodes of stent thrombosis. But we saw no episodes of a stent migration, uh, and we saw no uh, complications related to stent deployment. I think the major conclusion from the Abre study is, uh, first of all, that the stent itself is both safe and efficacious in treating uh, venous disease. And this uh, now sits with uh, a number of other studies that have been produced over the last several years to indicate that treating venous disease is an absolutely reasonable thing to do and outcomes that you get in these patients are very good. I think the main conclusion you can draw from the Abre study is that we included a very challenging patient population in the study uh, uh, where, and that was really demonstrated by 44% uh, of patients needing a stent under the inguinal ligament. And this is an indication of how complex these patients were. And in this group of patients, we still got uh, good patency outcomes of 79.8% uh, at one year. And furthermore, we saw no stent fracture in a population of patients treated with the Abre stent. And it has always been a significant concern that stents would fracture under the inguinal ligament. We have not seen this. So this is extremely reassuring uh, that the modern uh, venous-specific stents will perform well in hostile conditions. I think the take-home messages for clinicians are that uh, we have an additional extremely effective stent to add to the armamentarium of stents that are currently available uh, on the market, and in particular now venous-specific stents that have been designed uh, with the complexity of the venous system in mind. And this adds to the other uh, products that are now available for physicians to use. Uh, and more importantly, I think physicians can now treat patients uh, by extending stents under the ingle ligament with confidence that they're not going to encounter complications from the stent being under the ingle ligament and the stent will perform well in these uh, areas. Uh, so that is the principal message for me is that go forward with confidence in treating venous patients.
so, uh, so far, uh, what has been gratifying in the last several years is we've seen a number of IDE studies published. Uh, this was led first by Vici uh, publishing the outcomes of the, of the study and looking at the um, Boston Scientific Vici stent and then the Bard Vanova stent, which was published uh, recently. The, the main difference with the Abre study is uh, that patients were very clearly classified into nivel, acute DVT, and post robotics. I think clinicians can take confidence that if they're treating patients in these subsets, that the, the stent has been evaluated in all three of those groups, which is a small contrast to the previous studies that were, were published. And the second uh, striking difference for me is the number of patients with stents under the ingle ligament, uh, which is 44%. So it means we can genuinely evaluate the stent and how well it is performed in patients where stent extension below the ligament was required. Uh, the Vici stent um, had a, a similar proportion at 35%. We saw a higher rate of stent fractures in that group, although the, the overall outcomes were also good in that study and of a similar proportion to Abre. And in Venovo, very few patients had stent extension below the ligament. So they are not quite comparable as, as cohorts. So uh, taken uh, together, I think that's where the Abre uh, study has given us more confidence in those complex patient groups and in stent performance under the ligament uh, where we saw no fractures.